This talk's going to be about conversion rate optimization. Uh, you'll see it um, as an acronym. A lot of times it's just CRO. Uh, this is just basically how to kickstart your growth. Uh, real quick about me, my name is Chris Edwards. Uh, I work for a company called F and Amazing. Uh, we're based out of Orlando, and uh, I'm loving the city. It's been great. The weather is beautiful out there. Um, and I am the director of technology. I'm also a digital marketer. I've uh, been doing um, all kinds of things in the, in the marketing field, and I'm also a WordPress developer. I've been doing um, that. I've been a developer for 16 years, WordPress for about five years. So just jumping right in, um, we want to talk about where do you begin? Um, so where do you begin with uh, conversion rate optimization? How do you track the data? How do you set up an A-B test? Uh, when to know is the test conclusive? And I'm going to go over all that as we jump, jump through this. So the first thing, you've got to get yourself into a CRO mindset. Uh, and, and a lot of times you start to get into this by uh, the marketing team is not hitting their goals or the sales team is not hitting their goals. This is what normally pushes most companies and most business owners into that CRO mindset. Uh, now, what I want to say is you should probably work on being in the CRO mindset at all times, not waiting until there's a problem. Because by the time there's a problem, you may be addressing it too late. You want to tackle this before, uh, before the problem arises. So you want to be in that CRO mindset at all times. So what is that CRO mindset? Basically, it's the idea of doing more with less. Um, realizing that failing is only really part of the game. You're going to fail a certain test. Um, one, of, uh, one of the people I work with, he, he worked in a larger corporation. They did one test, and his test lost $25,000 in one day. But they were able to refine it and ended up making more money in the long run because they did that test. So don't be afraid to fail. You want to follow the data. Uh, the data is going to tell you everything you need to know. You may think that you know everything there is to know about stuff, but the data is going to tell you differently. Uh, we've trained ourselves over at our company. We always take a step back and say, what's the data telling us? Because we can sit in the room and all of us can have our own opinions, but the data is what ultimately is going to be right. And then this is the hardest part for everybody, letting it go. You've got to sit back and you've just got to say, let's do it and let's let it run. I don't like the way this test is running, I don't like the way this is working, but you gotta stand back and just trust your data, trust your instincts, and just let the test, let whatever you're doing run, and find out what the what your answer is gonna be. So you don't wanna just wing this, you've gotta start with a plan. Uh, if you don't start with a plan, you're gonna, you're gonna properly do this. So you don't wanna just test to test on your website. So we're talking about AB tests here. Um, you don't want to start testing random stuff because you heard, I'm sure everyone's heard those, oh, someone changed the button color and they increased the sales five times. Um, don't just start randomly changing everything in your site just because you want to sit here and test. You've got to come up with a great test. You've got to create a backlog. Come up with, you know, everything that you're going to do this week, next week, and so forth. Have it completely planned out. Don't do one test. And then once that test is done, sit back and then try and plan at that stage the next test. Build up all your tests so that you're ready to go. As soon as one's done, the next one's ready to go, you can jump right in. And then you're going to want to collect data. And with collecting data, there are tons of options out there. And it's overwhelming how many different options are out there, but I'm going I'm to narrow that down. You've got the standard, which is Google Analytics. I'm sure everybody here has heard of Google Analytics. It's free. It's easy to set up. You drop one little code on your website, it starts tracking. There's a lot more in depth you can go with Google Analytics, but you can just start the basic tracking just by dropping the code on your page. And then there's going to be times where you're going to need more advanced analytics. And that's when KISS metrics or Mixed Panel come into play. Mixed Panel does have a free option uh, up to 25,000 events. Uh, KISS metrics, unfortunately, does not have a free option. There is a price involved with that. Uh, you would want to look, both of them have differences in them. You're going to want to kind of look over those two platforms and see which one's going to be best for you. They do require an advanced integration into your website or application that's going to, uh, that could take a little bit of developer time to put in. So they're not going to be as simple as just dropping a code like Google Analytics on your page. But we'll jump in in a minute and we'll dive in a little deeper of why you would use one of those advanced platforms. 
So the other great thing about those two options is they're directly integrated into most A-B testing platforms. And this is great because while you're doing A-B testing, if you're doing Google running Google Analytics, it can be very difficult to actually understand the data that is on your website. Um, you're not gonna be able to understand what's happening. Your conversion funnels will be, could be all mixed up inside there because it's not a platform that's built easily to, to accept those A-B tests. You're gonna have to make some changes to the, uh, to, to the way your funnels are set up and your goal funnels are set up in order to you know, see those changes. Mixed panel and Kiss metrics integrate with most of the software and it'll actually show your conversion rate funnels right inside of there. So that it's a great tool when you're wanting to see what's happening. So we're going to jump right in how to create an A-B test. And the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to create a funnel. So what you got to do is you've got to look at what you have. And this is just a standard SaaS funnel. Um, and we're going to consider activation. Uh, an active user is our activation, is our, is our goal. And so you see we have we go from user sign up, then the user uploads their profile photo, then they invite a team member, create the first task, and then they're an active user. So once those are done, that's what we're considering an active user. You have to define your funnel and figure out what you want that funnel to be and what the steps of those funnels are before you can accurately set up a, um, a conversion test. So I'm just gonna run through KISS metrics and the way it's set up on air. It works the same with mixed panel and any other analytic pack platforms that you wanna look at. Um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and jump in there. You're gonna create the event. And you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna, uh, the experience will show uh, the funnels in the report automatically and KISS metrics, mixed panel, you have to do a little bit of setup to get it, get it in there. But you'll see it going through here. And you'll see right in this section, this is where we can change and we can look at the different A-B tests that are going on. You can see the different funnels. And you can see the conversion rate going uh, to each new step. So this is how you're going to be able to look at your different experiments inside of KISS metrics to see how they're performing. So, in, in place of the quantitative data, you also want qualitative data. Uh, the quantitative data is very important to have. And what that is, is qualitative data is data that you can collect directly from the customer. Uh, so you're gonna have um, different ways to do that. There's Qualaru and Olark. I think, I think Olark is free for a certain amount. I don't know 100%. Um, one of these two options has a free plan available. And what these are, and I'm sure everyone has seen these before, these are these little chat boxes or message boxes that pop up at the bottom of the website. You can have just a general uh, on-page survey where you're gonna ask any kind of question you want. And what you wanna do is analyze your funnel. So when you look in that funnel and you find drop-off points, you find areas that people are consistently dropping off going through, you need to figure out what's going on. And sometimes the data will not always show exactly why they've dropped off. It's just gonna show you that somebody's dropping off at this point. So this is where <coughs> the quality comes in. Come in there and ask, how can we help? Are you doing something, uh, are you looking for something that we don't have? Do you need assistance? How can we improve? And what's preventing you from purchasing? A lot of people think, you, you may have seen these and never, never clicked on them, and you may think these are horrible ideas because You've never done it, so you don't think anybody else will. Surprisingly, we have seen uh, a lot of people will fill these out and they will put uh, some information in there. You're not gonna get every single person who comes to your site that's gonna drop off, fill these out, but if you just get a couple in there, you're gonna be able to start to see a trend of what they may be missing, and what, what's holding them back. So we, we like to do this step, but the other thing you can do is you can also use UX usability testing tools. Uh, one that we've used is user testing. It is a little bit pricey, but it does a whole, it's really cool, it does a whole entire screen recording, and you set up tasks for, for a user to do. So they, they find the user in the demographic that you want, and with the specifications you want. And you can define a test, and you say, I want you to go, this is step one, step two, step three. Uh, the example is we had a, a new client brought on, and we thought the shopping cart experience was very confusing. It was a photography-based type website, uh, 
and you had to upload your photo, crop your photo, resize your photo, and we thought, this, we want to see, we're all tech people at, at our company, so we're like, this is easy, we can figure this out. We want to see what the average day uh, consumer will. So we were able to target exactly the market we wanted and the exact experience level we wanted and set up tax. So we had them go in and said, you need to upload a photo, go all the way to the checkout process, all the way to the last screen where ask for your credit card information, then bail out there, you don't have to purchase it from us. What was interesting was we found out that the funnel that we thought didn't make a whole lot of sense, it made a lot of sense, and then we found other areas that needed to be improved that they were getting stuck on. Because as they're going through, you're watching their video or their screen recording, and you hear, you actually can hear them talking to you, and they go, okay, it wants me to crop the photo, but I don't see a crop button. Well, they didn't understand what the crop icon looked like. So then we realized we had to put the crop icon and put the word crop next to it. And it was just a simple change like that that potentially now these people are being paid to complete the test, so they're going to keep hunting through your page. But what we like to think is the second they got confused, the average person would bail out of your uh, out, out of your phone. Because at that point, they're confused, they, they can't find it, they're frustrated, they're going to leave. I'm sure you all have hit shopping cart experiences before, you've just been completely frustrated and said, I'm done, I'm out of here. So we were able to do that. And then the other thing we use is Crazy Egg. Crazy Egg is a heat mapping tool. There's a couple other ones out there as well. Um, but we like Crazy Egg because it does work with the um, uh, A-B testing. All the A-B testing tools that we use, Crazy Egg has integration for. So we can actually see. So what is a heat map? It's one of these things. So you can see it. what it does is it tracks where most people, there's a lot of people who still read with their mouse. Wherever they're looking on the screen, is where they put the mouse. And if you don't think you do that, watch next time and you'll see a lot of times you're grabbing the mouse and moving it to different parts of the screen that you're reading. So the way the heat map works is it looks where you're moving your mouse. They also have click heat maps, which are where you're clicking on the page. So this helps you to figure out where your call to actions need to be at and what, what people are clicking on, what people are ignoring. Um, and then, with those heat maps, you've got to look at how to optimize different things. I want to show you a really interesting one. It goes into, um, there was a study done. Now this one is an eye tracking heat map. Now, a lot of universities will do this where they put these crazy things on your head with all these, you know, they hold your eyes open, they put cameras, and they track where your eyes are going to point on the page. It's really cool, but um, you're not going to get that just with a normal little plug-in you put on your website. But, this is what they found. So, when you have, the model taking a look at your product. You notice how many people look over to the actual product versus when the model's looking directly at you, they ignore your product. So this is one of those, it's actually funny, the founder of our company, he, every picture he has, he's never looking directly at the camera. He's always looking off into the distance so that we can put him on anything looking at the, uh, at the product. And it, it, we kind of make fun of him for it. But it's true, with the study like this, it shows how you want your person looking towards it. If you have a big, huge hero image across your um, page, you want the, you want, if you have a picture of a person or a model, you want them facing towards your call to action, not facing the opposite direction of the call to action. Because you want to drive them to whatever text or button that you're trying to get them to click and not looking off somewhere else. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use these heat maps to redevelop your backlog. This is going back to what kind of A-B tests do I want to run? So you go through, you look at these heat maps, you come up with some ideas, and, and this is where you can be a little creative and look at what's going on and say, all right, so nobody's clicking this button over here. What can I do to make this button better? Or what can I do to make this look, uh, make people want to click this? So now, we've done all that, we're ready to start our testing. So what is an A-B test? So, this is a split test. Every single one of you has probably been A-B tested today. If, has anybody used their Facebook app today? All right, a couple people. Every single one of you went through an A-B test today. Facebook has so many A-B tests running on their app alone and on their website, you don't even know when you're being tested. Uh, you may have noticed, noticed this when you've gone to a website on one computer and you've gone to that same website again on another computer and it looks totally different. They're A-B testing you. They're showing you one version of their website and then it sets a cookie. If you go to another computer or an incognito browser and you reload that page, you may get the different variation and things will be changed. And they're testing you to see which one's gonna convert better. 
there's tools out there that make this, make this real easy. Easy. There's Optimizely, and there's Visual Website Optimizer. And I probably should have written it under their logo there. Uh, again, that's Visual Website Optimizer. It's bwo.com. And Optimizely is just optimizely.com. Both these tools are uh, free to use, or Visual Website Optimizer, I uh, believe, has cost to it. Optimize is free to use. I'm going to run through Optimizely here. When it comes to which one do I prefer, they both are really good. Uh, there's been a couple of ports I've ran into with Optimizely in the past week, um, but they both have they both will work very well for you. If you're looking for a free option, Optimizely is really good. Visual Website Optimizer, it looks pretty, uh, but it costs money. But they both do a great job, and they both load uh, very quickly on your page. So use either of them. You put them on your website. You don't even have to do any kind of plug-in, don't have to do anything crazy like that. So you just gotta add into your head tag, which with um, pretty much all WordPress themes is very easy to do. You just add in the script tag, which they'll give you, drop that on the page, you're ready to start testing. So they have a WYSIWYG editor. So what we're gonna do on this one, and I'm not gonna run through a live demo uh, instead of just to show you some screenshots. We want it on this page here, we want to change out that learn more button just to see if we can get a better conversion rate on it. All we have to do is right click on it, click, click on link, click edit text, put in the new text, which we're gonna try by now, and see what happened. This is an actual A-B test that we did run. Um, and then you have, so you have your control, and now you have your variant. And all the change was just that by now. 21% increase in conversions is by changing. Um, funny thing is, this product's free. You don't buy anything. But it increased conversions and increased downloads. It's pretty funny. So we kept that and ran with that. And uh, we actually did some further testing. I think we may have actually got rid of the bar altogether. I can't remember what happened with that one. But that increased conversions 21%. So, whoops. What do you test first? You're going to have to do a test with a page that has a lot of traffic. The, the only problem with A-B testing is you've got to have a good amount of traffic, you've got to have a good number of conversions coming in because that's the only way that it's going to go to run the test. If you've got a page that's only getting maybe 10 people a day, it's going to take a long time to run a test because you're going to need probably about two to 3,000 visits minimum to really get something decent. Um, and then there's other, page, other, other pages that you need a lot. Uh, Facebook, for example, they have so many hits, they can run a test and have a conclusive answer uh, pretty much in about 10 minutes, which is really cool, and everyone's jealous of that because that would make my job so much easier if I could run a test and know an answer in 10 minutes. Usually, with our clients, we're usually running about a week to a month time frame before we have a conclusive answer that we can go off of. So you're going to want to find those, tra those pages that have the highest traffic. You can jump into your Google Analytics and just find that very easily. And those are the pages that you want to run your tests on. So then you got to figure out what are the common tests to do on these pages because now you've got everything ready to go. You're ready to start your test. So the biggest thing is you want to test buttons. This is changing button colors, changing the style of buttons, doing anything like that. Um, this is probably the ugliest looking button ever. I hate those type of buttons, but you know you can try that. You can change the colors. You can try that. So at this point, you want to be careful. Um, be nice to your designer because they're going to be upset and think that you're telling them that you think that their design sucks, um, and they're going to probably be upset. And you got to explain to them that you're going with data-driven design. We want to see what everybody coming to your site is going to look at because. While it might look pretty, it doesn't do you any good if nobody is actually clicking through or purchasing your product. So, they're going to have to test some different things. Use that data to show the designer and go back to the designer nicely. Don't go back and say, haha, you lost. Don't, don't do anything like that. Go to the designer, just kind of be cool about it and say, hey, we tested it. We want to change the button colors because they came out better. You want to test images. So, with this one here, uh, you'll see the only thing that changed between these two, this is an actual campaign that was done. Um, so during the uh, Obama campaign, they were really famous for the amount of A-B testing that they did on their site. You could almost never go to the site and get the same site um, to pop up. They were changing everything about it. So they did, the, the, they did this test right here, which is 
they changed the two images. So they're doing a dinner, the one's a real close-up shot, the other one's just more just conversating with a group of people. Which one do you guys think won? One on the right? You said the right, you were correct. They had a 19% uh, better interaction rate on their page, which is filling out that form it was above, uh, above the uh, image. So you also want to test layouts. You want to see, do I move the sidebar to the left or to the right? Um, I don't have an example, and I thought I did in this slide, and I don't, so I'll just tell you about one. Um, some of the worst that's just to work at Kissmetrics. If you ever go to Kissmetrics, you'll notice on the left side of their blog is where they have their sidebar, rather than the traditional on the right. The reason they did that is they found an increase in conversions, almost doubled their conversions of people signing up for their email list by putting it on the left side because people read left to right, and they didn't really care Although they were great content, they were more concerned about you signing up for their email than they were about you reading their article. So you may want to test that, depending on what your call to action is. Obviously, the final what your goal is before you go to move the sidebar and have no goal, because then what are you testing? But figure out what your goal is, and then move those things around. So you can test the different layouts. You've got to find the money pages. So these are your pages that you're going to make money off of, because that's really what you're testing, ultimately, is a way to increase your revenue. So you got to find those, uh, those those ones, and then you got to think outside the box. So we took this guy here, or not we, but this guy here uh, was a test that was done for a t-shirt company. They tested the only difference is this guy's clean shaven, this guy has a big beard on him. He's more hipster. Funny enough, hipsters win. 49% increased conversion by just adding a beard to the image. And it, it doesn't even make sense, but their target market for whatever, for that, their target market, maybe everyone has a beard, I don't know. It, it worked out. So sometimes you gotta think outside the box when you do these tests and just come up with, you know, what what is something that I'm not even thinking of that may work or may not. Try it and see. If, if you fail, again, we go back to that first slide, failing is part of the game. If you fail and it goes down, all right, went down, you know not to do that again. Now you know in the future, you know, if, if this test turned out the opposite way, you know, and the clean shaven, then you know, well, let's not put anybody with a beard on here because for whatever reason, the beard didn't convert. Don't screw up. So we're gonna talk about how people do, how, how people screw up with A-B testing. It's very easy to do. The biggest thing, they don't stay focused. So you can only really change one thing at a time when you're testing a page. And the reason for that is you don't really know psychologically what's going to cause somebody to do something different. So if on the top of the page, you completely change the header and the image, images, and then down at the bottom, you also change the text on the call to action button, you have no idea if the header that you're testing at the top, if that variation actually is what caused them to convert, and it wasn't the button text. So now you're gonna have confusing results, and you're not gonna really know which one of those paid off in the long run. So you wanna do one test at a time, be patient, we have this with clients all the time. They throw us 20 things on the homepage they want to test. And we go through, we figure out which order we want to test them. We'll come back and say, this is the order we're going to test them. This is about how long, based off of traffic, we think each test is going to take. They're like, just do them all. We're like, we're not going to do them all because we want to have a conclusive test for you guys. And, and in the long run, it'll pay off and you'll have a much better converting page once you put all those tests in play and put those results and continue through. If you have lower traffic, you, you, you want to stick to A-B tests, not A-B-C tests. Because A-B-C tests are going, they're going to need a lot more uh, um, traffic. You could literally do an A-B-C, E-B-F-G test if you had enough people coming to your website. Um, but when you have a lot less traffic, you're going to want to stick just to those two. And then from those two, so maybe you do a drastic change and you see how that does. If the drastic change works, then you go ahead and you optimize variations of that drastic change. We had that recently. We completely redesigned the whole front page look of one of, our, one of our clients' websites. And it converted better, but they wanted, we, we, we weren't sure what copy, what the image was in the hero, what the button was, but instead we just came up with what we thought would look best. Went with that, did the test, found out that that new version worked, launched that, and then ran tests on the buttons, and ran tests on the images, and ran those tests. So you, you want to, you have to basically run a test, implement, run another test, implement, and just continue going down. You can't run all your tests and then try and implement later. 
multivariant uh, testing. So this is doing lots of changes. So this is testing multiple sections within your site and changing out content, and moving things around. It's very complex to do, and you really have to have a lot of traffic. I'm talking, you know, almost a million visitors a month or more. Um, it's a very complex, and if if you're uncomfortable doing it, I would get with. Uh, somebody who's an expert in doing that before you run those tests because they're very easy to mess up and very easy to get conflicting data. Um, that's basically testing each individual section in, inside the page. And I don't, we don't like doing them because it goes back to the whole, if I'm changing this over here, although all the call to actions inside this one, and then I have a whole other box over here that I'm changing some content, I don't really know if this one over here is affecting this one. So uh, what they'll do is they present all the different types of pages and test all the pages together and it just takes a ton of traffic because they may, it may end up being 30 variations they're testing to see what works. So I would, um, it's something you can look into doing if you do have a lot of traffic, but we usually try to kind of stay away from it um, and just stick to the, little, the more simple tests that are going to be a better answer. Um, and then the other mistake everyone makes, they call tests way too early. You'll start a test and that first day, one of those is going to be out in front. You're going to be like, oh, that one's going to go, that's going to win, that, that's the one I'm going after. What well, I'm done, I'm moving on. And you're only a day or two into the test. I've had uh, multiple times where I've had misleading data in the beginning of a test. The test starts out, one of them is clear, you know, front runner. I'm excited about it. I'm like, all right, this is, this is perfect. Um, two weeks later, come back, check the data, and that one's losing significantly. So sometimes it's just a change to your page. That, that new change, everyone gets excited about it, they see the change and, and it's something new to them. You don't know what's causing it, but just let the test run fully out to get full significance. There are a few different uh, tools out there. Each of the uh, A-B testing tools have one of these. Uh, they'll actually test significance for you, but they also have a calculator if you want to run where you can put in how many visits you have, how many conversions, what, so half the conversion rate, and it will tell you um, which certainty it has. There's different certainty levels you can set optimizely. I believe you can set between, I think it's between 80% and 99%. None of them will ever tell you they're 100% certain. And the, the, the less certain you want to be, the, um, you know, basically 80%, you got a 20% chance of being wrong with what the test shows. So, um, we usually run our tests between either 95 or 99 percent based off of what traffic they're getting and how quickly they want the test done. We don't normally go under that because it could be, it may be too off for us to really uh, see. So, what your action items are when you set these up is you've got to, you got to get started, define that simple funnel, create your first A/B test, and reach uh, statistical significance. Um, that's that's the basics behind your test. And you want to use all the different tools that are out there, your heat maps, um, you know, your user testing, any of those different pieces, uh, and find out what people are looking for and come up with some ideas of what you want to test. Um, and so with that, if there's any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. And yes. She was asking about the one with the cat with the orange and blue button. Um, I believe the blue button did better, and it was, I'm trying to remember the exact percentage. I, I, unfortunately, I think I deleted that slide. I think it was somewhere around 40. It's like around 30 or 40 percent. Yeah, on that test, they, uh, whoop. Right. Yeah, so they changed a couple things. They changed the color of the button, the shape of the button, really the whole style of the button. They also changed with the uh, arrows at the end. I wouldn't recommend doing that many changes. Um, 
unless you're testing the whole style of the button itself, just because there's a lot of changes there and you don't know if it was little arrows at the end. You want to make your changes as granular as possible. You want them to be small changes so you can really see what changes. That's going to affect what you do in the future as you build more pages and more, more, more items in the future. Yes? We, we were manually putting them in Trello. We, we live and die by Trello at our office, so. <laughs> yes? How do you establish what would you say are the baselines? I'm sorry. What would you say are the baselines in terms of traffic? You said you talked about low traffic. Um, low traffic? Low yeah. um, traffic? That was one of the things in terms of number and duration, because, like, say it's Christmas versus summer. I mean, it's kind of year, it's different. The number of visitors, depending on what kind of site it's like, how do you how do you establish like what's enough visitor wise and what's enough kind of wise? So if you have under a thousand visitors uh, per month, it's going to be very difficult to get an accurate test that's not going to run forever. So we usually say about a thousand uh, visitors per month. Um, so if you have busier times, you may want to run it during those busier times to, to increase it. Uh, the other thing you got to take into account when you're doing stuff like that is, are your items seasonal? If you have a, a, a big traffic fluctuation based off of um, what season it is, it could be because your product is seasonal, and that's going to affect, that may be something else to test, because now you're looking at, well, in the summer, what, what do I need to do versus what do I need to do in the winter? Because colors and everything could be different based off of the time of you know, year. That makes sense. Um, but for evergreen content, you just want to do it you know, like when it's really busy, right? The other question might be related to that, though. You can use this just in terms of like your high traffic areas, period, not in terms of sales or you know, in terms of setting up your website so you have the, the content that So you're asking um, about doing it in high content areas? Well, like testing what your, in terms of placement, what like your highest click-through areas are, not necessarily in terms of merchandise, but just yes. content. So we're talking about, well, right? yeah, so you're talking about um, testing the layouts. Yes, yes. So definitely, you want to test the layout, move in whatever your call to action is, uh, whether it be an email, newsletter, sign up or a click to purchase button. You want to go ahead and try and move it around to the different areas, and that's where you can use those heat maps to kind of to determine where are people looking. Those heat maps also have what they call scroll maps. And I wish I put that in my presentation, but it'll show you how far, what percentage of people get to what part of your page. You'll see 100% of the people always see the top of your page because of the, route, uh, of the window size. But you'll be able to see how many people are really scrolling down. We have one page that nobody even scrolls on. And we realized they just didn't know they could scroll. It looked like it was a one-page website and they moved on. Never scrolled all the content down below. So you can use those scroll maps to figure out the placement of this content. Do you want it higher above the fold? Is it something that you want to put after you've already talked a little bit about the product and you want to put the button there? Um, my suggestion is put in both. Um, I'll usually, I have a call to action. I always have two call to actions on the page. I have one at the top, then as you go through the content, there'll be one right in the middle of the content. And if there's more, if there's extra stuff after that, then we want it all the way at the end. So, and all of them go to the same places. But the idea is, I don't want you to get to the end of my content and go, oh, that's really cool, and then close out the window. I want you to click my call to action and go purchase my item, sign up for my list, or whatever I'm trying to get you to do. Yes, sir. Which software has this format? I'm sorry? Which, which software has this format? Um, Crazy Egg does. Uh, they have it. And Speclet is another one out there. Uh, Speclet has scroll maps, click maps, and heat maps. And Speclet actually will also do a JavaScript recording of the screen, which is kind of cool. So you can actually watch live sessions of where people's mouse went. Um, what, what you guys don't realize is everything you do on someone's website is 
completely tracks and everything you do. They're watching where you're clicking on the screen, where you're moving your mouse at all times. All that's tracked on most websites. But Inspectlet will do that as well. So Inspectlet is a pretty cool tool. I think it's really cheap. I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something. It's, 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 How do you spell it? Um, I think it's I N S P E C T L E T, I think. Dot com. But I'm like spelling bee. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Hey, Chris, on email, sometimes you'll see, um, click here for more information, 10 different spots. Does that Crazy Egg also monitor that? Crazy Egg does not, but you can do A-B testing through um, MailChimp. Uh, has has A-B testing in it. I believe Constant Contact also has A-B testing. I just don't know for sure. Probably AWeber also. A Weber. Probably I think I think A Weber also does it. You just gotta look at what their tools do, but no, you can't do on Crazy Egg, you can't do on those individual email campaigns. Are there any other questions? Yes. I think a lot has to do with seasonality and you know, I think back to the inquiry. The the biggest issues at Elvis segments are so if you plaster the headline, I think it might have more to do with Position of the buttons. So you're asking about with the headline. Um, I'm more apt to go with a, an interesting headline than the position of the, the click button. So they we we found that both really work. <laughs> um, you want to have your headline enough, give enough information to make them want to click the button as well, but you want to make your button text also um, easy enough for them to understand what it's doing. We found that they're confused on what that, like the learn more buttons. We have, we've often found that people are afraid to click those. Or if your product, if you have presented your product, learn more works well when you have presented your, you have got a very complex product. People don't want to hit sign up now because they're like, I still don't know what these people do. They want to do, they want to learn more. So it really depends what your product is and how easy your product is to convey in that, head, that headline message up there in the header. If it's really easy and they know what it is, Give them a sign up right away. If not, maybe they want to learn more if it's too complex. And that's, that's one of those where you just test the different pieces. I like to use join us for an event rather than learn more. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, I forgot. I, I'll tweet out. If you all follow me, I'll tweet out a tool. There's actually a tool out there. And I can't remember off the top of my head. I haven't saved one of my Evernote files. That you can actually compare. It shows comparisons of different statements, so you can actually ask that and it looks across the web to see which one's the better one to use based off of different tests out there. So you can put in join us versus, you know, sign up, and it'll tell you which one's more widely used. It's, it's more what's, what's widely used across larger websites. You can hope that they did the AP testing and that's why they're using it. But it's a cool tool. I'll, I'll tweet it out a little bit later. All right. Um, that concludes this talk. Um, I, I will be in the happiness bar. I think we'll be heading over there after this if you all have any other questions. I do have stickers. I got a couple t-shirts if anybody wants them. Um, so just come up here and see me or come over to the happiness bar. Thank you.